to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. We welcome you today to our study of lessons on God's truth. In this series of lessons, we're thinking about both moral subjects and subjects of interest to folks today based on God's truth in His Word. And so as always, we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. As always, we want you to know that today's lessons and all of our lessons are brought to you by both individuals and congregations of the Lord's Church in your area. The Church of Christ would be happy for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about maybe one of the subjects we're talking about or whatever it may be, the plan of salvation, church, the worship of God's people, you'll find people at the Lord's Church who'd be happy to sit down and study God's Word with you. Won't you check out the Church of the Lord in your area? Uh, visit their study on Wednesday or Sunday, worship for Sunday. They'd be glad to have you. You'd be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we want to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? We have over 500 lessons on both biblical text and topical lessons on a wide variety of subjects. They're all available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lessons or any of our lessons, you can download them free from our website or you can request a DVD for video or a CD for audio and we'll be happy to mail that to you free of charge. Just fill out our media request form or you can call us or write to us at the information given at the end of our program. The subject of truth is what we're thinking about today a study of God's truth. Can we know the truth? What is truth? In a world that is often confused, where people think there may be multiple truths on an idea, what does God's Word say on these issues? And so today we're thinking about the great questions found in Jeremiah 37, verse 17, and Romans 4, verse 3, what does the Scripture say on both moral subjects and subjects of interest that people are thinking about today? You know, our goal in thinking about these series of lessons on the truth, it's really not to determine if so much we can know the truth. Rather, we want to notice that God's Word is truth and what that truth is in the Word of God. And friend, the Scriptures teach. The Bible teaches that we can and we must know truth to go to heaven. Ephesians 5 verse 17 says, Do not be foolish or do not be unwise, but understand the will of the Lord. God gave me the Bible so that I could know and I could understand His will. And the scripture says in Ephesians 3 verse 4 that when we read, we can understand God's will. And thus, our Lord also taught in John chapter 8, verse 32, you can know the truth, and truth will make you free. And so today we're not considering if you can know the truth. The Bible clearly teaches that I can and must know the truth to be pleasing to God. Our goal in this series of lessons also is not to determine whether somebody in our family, our parents, or some family member knew the truth. We're not asking what did somebody else know, what did some family member know. We're asking, can I know the truth? It's a personal matter. Romans 14 verse 12 says, So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. We're asking, can I know? Regardless of what anybody else may or may not have known, it's a personal matter. Luke chapter 16, verses 27 and 28, the, the rich man was told, 
He had his opportunity. He should have taken care of that regardless of what his brothers did. It was his responsibility to know truth and be accountable to Almighty God. Friend, our subject today, our goal today, is also really not to consider or debate what truth is. We want to recognize from the outset, if a person believes in the Bible, that God's Word is the truth. Psalm 119, 160 says, I love this passage, and the way the New King James words it is, the entirety of your word is truth. As we consider these moral subjects, these subjects of interest, friend, we are looking at this from the outset with the idea that God's word is the final truth. It's the final authority. Whatever this book says, that's the truth on the matter. Jesus, in his prayer to the Father, in John 17, verse 17, prayed, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And so our goal is to discover, to discover from the Scripture if a person can know and be sure the truth on certain moral and interest subjects today of which we are focusing on and which we're putting our interest in. And so as we begin this series of lessons and as we begin to think about the truth, I want to begin by emphasizing some things that if we're not careful, can hinder us from knowing the truth. Can a person know the truth? Absolutely, but if we're not real careful, there are some hindrances that may be in our heart or our mind or in our life that can keep us from really knowing and focusing on the truth. What are some of those? Friend, I can be hindered from knowing the truth if I only believe and practice what other people tell you, that's going to hinder you from knowing God's truth. Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 7, the Jews were great at focusing on the traditions, the commands of the elders, and Jesus said, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, this people draw near to me with their mouth, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why? In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Friend, if all you believe in practice is what other people tell you, what somebody else tells you, what you've heard all your life, that may hinder you from knowing the truth. We must not follow a multitude, Exodus chapter 23, verse 2, in doing evil. You see, in the Bible, there are two paths, two ways two roads. There is the wide path that the multitude of people are going down that leads to eternal destruction. Then there is that narrow, that restricted way, which leads to eternal life, and few are going down that path. What path are we going down? The path that focuses on God and His Word, or are we just kind of going along with the crowd? Paul said in Galatians 1.14 that had he wanted to, he could have focused on the commands and traditions of the people he was raised with. Instead, he focused on what he received as revelation from Almighty God. And so, friend, we're emphasizing that don't just practice or believe what you've always heard, what others have always told you. Get your Bible out and check it for yourself. Don't take what your parents or friends have told you to be the truth. I'm not saying that they're trying to purposely deceive you. I'm not saying that they're bad or anything like that. What we are saying is you have to know the truth. You have a personal responsibility to check and to base what you believe off the Scripture. And friend, this is what God wants us to do. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, the Bible says, here's the Christian's responsibility. Prove all things, hold fast, that which is good. Don't just accept it hook, line, and sinker. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And friend, we urge you today, please listen very carefully. We urge you, don't blindly accept 
what other religious leaders are telling you. And again, I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying that, uh, that, that they don't want you to go to, I mean, we're not saying that they're evil in that sense, but you have a personal responsibility to make sure that what you're doing and what you believe is based on the Word of God. There are a lot of folks who are teaching and doing things that may not be found in the Bible. Your responsibility is to check that. My responsibility is to check that. Other hindrance to knowing and believing the truth is not only believing and practicing what other people tell you, but human tradition and personal bias. That's definitely going to hamper you from knowing the truth. You know, sometimes people, when we talk to them about matters of religion, matters of salvation, why we worship the way we do, the unique nature of the Lord's church, and we say, well, why do, why do we do this? Why do you do that? Someone might say, well, that's the way we've always done it. Friend, is that a good reason to do what we do? Again, Matthew 15, verses 7 through 9, they taught as doctrine the commandments of men. Matthew 23, verses 17 through 26, Jesus spoke harshly against the religious leaders of His day. They would go halfway around the world to make a proselyte. Then they would make Him twice as much a son of hell as themselves. They were binding things that they shouldn't bind. They were not teaching things they should have taught. And a lot of what God wanted them to do was being left out. And so as we think about these ideas, Friend, don't, don't base what you believe and do off of personal bias or human tradition. We need to realize that God's Word is the final authority. Who has all authority? Matthew 28, 18 says that Jesus has all authority. Whose words can save me? John 6, verse 68, Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. And when I stand before the Almighty throne of God, whose words are going to be the judge on that day? John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my words, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. A third hindrance, and this is one that people often put their faith in. A third hindrance to somebody really knowing the truth is by putting our faith in the books of uninspired men. Friend, that's only going to hinder you from knowing the truth. We, we don't want to ask, what did some religious leader say? What does some doctrine or commandment or, or, or catechism or book of dis discipline of men say? Again, we're asking, what does the Scripture say? Romans 4, verse 3. Is there any word from the Lord? You see, my friend, the Bible is the only inspired guide to heaven. Men's books, they're not inspired of God. They can be flawed, and they're not from the mouth of the Holy Spirit, from the mind of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is God's plan of salvation for man. Romans 1.16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is God's power unto salvation. We are to receive with meekness the implanted Word, which is able to save our souls. The Word of God is, is what we're born again by. 1 Peter 1 verse 23, and, and, and Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life, no man comes to the Father except by me. And friend, do you remember the verse that we mentioned at the outset? John 8, verse 32. Jesus said, you must know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Don't focus. Books of men. Listen carefully to me now. Books of men, catechisms, methods of discipline, uh, all these various books that men want to put out, they cannot save your soul. The Word of God can. They cannot. Jesus said in John 12, 48 that His Word would be our judge. The Bible teaches in 2 Peter 1, verse 3, that God in His divine knowledge in the Bible has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Everything, listen carefully now, why do I not want to put my focus on the books of men? They are not inspired. They can be based on bias. And friend, the Bible tells me 
It has everything I need for life and for godliness. And so creed books, church tradition, the Apocrypha, uh, the Apostles' Doctrine, whatever book it may be, Friend, put your fo you want to make sure you're right. You want to make sure you know the truth. Put your focus on what God says, not what man says. Let me then mention another hindrance today that is so popular and that in many ways is you almost have to go against the grain to know the truth on this idea. Popular opinion. What culture says is right what the media pushes, and what everybody around you is doing. If that's all I focus on, friend, that's not going to help me to know the truth. In our day and age today, it's, there's a lot of moral subjects that our world feels very strongly about. And if you don't agree with that, if you don't get in line with the way they think, if you kind of go against the grain, you've seen this multiple times in the last few weeks and even last year. If you do anything different than what society likes, they'll pretty much cancel you. The woke culture and the cancel culture is pretty much demanding that if people don't believe the way they believe, you're not right and you can't be a part of society like that and you're an oddball. Well, friend, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Remember, I'm going to be judged by the Word of God, and God decides what's right and wrong, not culture and not society and not what the media or my friends or somebody else wants to do. And so an attachment to this old world and all the allurements of Satan is only going to hinder me from knowing God's truth and doing that which is pleasing to Almighty God. Well, we thought now about some hindrances to knowing the truth, now let's think about some things that will really help and, and benefit us to know God's truth and know right from wrong, know good from evil. What's the first help to knowing you know the truth? Friend, you must. You must have a good and honest heart. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 19, Matthew 4, Luke chapter 8, that seed that fell on the good soil, it fell on a good and honest heart. A person who wants to do what's right, a person who will honestly evaluate truth, and who more than anything wants to please God. Let, let me give you the prime example of that. Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus, he believes with all his heart he's doing right. Acts chapter 23 verse 1. And he is headed down the road to Damascus with official letters from the religious leaders of his day that if he finds any Christians who are following Jesus Christ, he can take them bound to prison. Along that way, you remember, the Lord presents himself to you. Who, who, he's blinded by that great. Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're per persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. And listen to Saul's good and honest heart. Lord, what would you have me to do? Friend, that's the kind of individual who really can know the truth, who more than personal opinion, more than family, more than society, more than anything else, wants to know, God, what does your word tell me is right? What can I do to please you and go to heaven? I, I, I love the words of John chapter 2, verse 5. Jesus' mother said to the serpents, to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. That's the kind of attitude. 2 Kings 22, verse 14, Micaiah said, I'm not going to turn to the right hand or to the left. Whatever my God says to me, that will I do. And don't you remember the request of Samuel, the young boy Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, verse 9, God's voice came to Samuel multiple times, and finally he was told to say, Speak, Lord, your servant here. That's a good and honest heart. Well, let's hear God's voice. Whatever God says, let's obey that because we love God. A second help to making sure you know the truth is to have a mindset that I'm going to seek, I'm going to prove, and I'm going to test everything I hear. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Acts 17 verse 11. 
The Bible says of the Bereans that they were more fair-minded and that they received the word with all readiness, and then they searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Paul came and presented the gospel to them. They, they, they brought Paul into their home. They heard what he had to say, but they did not automatically accept it. They got out their Bible and they checked everything they heard. That's what God wants us to do. Isaiah 34, 16, search in the book of the law of the Lord and see. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. God says, come, let us reason together. We need to use our reasoning faculties. When, when I hear somebody say, this is what you've got to do to be saved, or this is the right belief, this is what God says on this moral issue. Friend, I am not automatically going to accept that just because somebody said that. There are a multitude of liars and there are a multitude of false teachers out today. I'm going to accept it when I see it in my Bible. Now somebody may say something and point me toward the Bible, but I'm going to believe it because God said, not because somebody else said that to be true. And so. Let me give you just a few examples that are so clear to see in the Bible today where oftentimes people hear something and before they check it, they automatically accept that. Some people will say, for example, that man, some man somewhere is the head of God's church today. Some people will say, well, the Pope is the head of the church today. He's the Holy Father today. And we need to look up and venerate and call them Father and put our trust and hope in them. My friend, it's so, so easy to see today. That's not the case. In fact, does not the cl Scripture clearly say in Matthew 23, 9, call no man Father? Does not the Bible say today that Jesus is still the head of the church and still God's spokesperson today? God, who at various times, various ways, spoke in time past by the fathers, listen now, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. Jesus is the head of the church still. The church not decapitated. Jesus is still the head. Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23, and I can know God's Word and be right with Him. I'll give you another example. Some people will say, you know, in our culture today, it's okay in a mixed assembly for a woman to stand up and preach before men. Now, friends, hear me well. Do we believe women are important to God? Absolutely. Do we believe they have a special, unique, God-given role that only they can do and that the church would suffer without that? Absolutely. But do we believe? that in a mixed assembly of men and women, it's okay for women to stand up and preach? Let's hear what God says on that. I do not permit a woman to speak, to preach, or to be an authority over a man, but to remain in silence. That's clear from the Bible. 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35. Well, well someone says, uh, well, baptism is not essential to self. All you got to do to be saved is believe. Baptism is an outward sign of an inner grace. Baptism is not essential to salvation. That's what a lot of folks say. What's the Bible say? Jesus said this so clearly. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. Here's what man said. Here's what verbatim. The Word of God said, I've got to check for myself. I've got to prove and not just trust what I hear, but do what God says. And those are just a few examples that we mentioned today. And so as a help, we mention this next. You've got to be committed. An individual has to be committed to studying the Scriptures for themselves. Friend, your eternal destiny is your responsibility. You're going to give an account of yourself to God. The Word of God is God's method of delivering His truth, what saves us, and I've got to make sure for myself. I'm not going to let anybody else do this for me. I've got to make sure for myself. I study the Scripture for myself and do what's right. You see, you can read and understand. Ephesians 3, 4 says that. Don't be foolish. Understand 
what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians 5 to 17. Study. Listen now. Study to show yourself approved unto God. How can I know that God is approving me? When I study His Word. So search the Scriptures, Acts 17, 11, 1 Peter 4, 11, speak as the oracles of God and be ready always to give an answer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. And so when we think about this idea, friend, a person needs to be open-minded to the Scriptures. I need to have the mindset that I do not know it all. I am, I'm, I'm ready to learn. Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 1 is a perfect attitude. They came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. You want a good attitude that will help a person to know the truth? Have that mindset. Lord, teach me. I'm ready to learn from your word. I'm ready to know what you would have me to do. I, I want to make sure that I'm right with you. And so be open-minded to the Scriptures. Be open-minded to what God has to say and, and find a good balance. We're not saying being so open-minded that you automatically accept what everybody says, but be open-minded enough to say this. God's Word says it. I'm going to do it regardless of who does or who doesn't. I'm going to do what the Bible says. And so, friend, we're so glad that you've joined us for this series of lessons on a study of the truth. We're going to think about various moral subjects and various subjects of concern that people are thinking about today. And we're going to speak in love, but we're going to speak plainly about what God says on these issues. And so we want to invite you to join us next time for this series of lessons. And as always, if you've never obeyed the gospel, if you're not a child of God, we encourage you to do that. Do you believe that Jesus is God's Son? John chapter 8, verse 24. Would you turn to Him in repentance, turn from a life of sin and turn to Him in repentance? Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Would you make that good confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts 8, verse 36 and 37. And to get into Christ, Galatians 3, 27. To be forgiven of your sins and to be saved. Would you be immersed in water? Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and then rise out of that watery grave to walk in newness of life. Again, we're so glad you've joined us for our study of truth. We want to let God and His Word shine forth, and we want to have the attitude of young Samuel. Lord, teach us, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless us again when we study His Word. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.